In this video, we're going to work an example where we find the arc length function for y equals 2x to the, raised to the 3 halves, starting from the point 0, 0, starting from the origin, which um, this curve does go through the origin. So um, this is going to be kind of like finding the arc length, but not from a beginning point to a fixed ending point, but a beginning point to what you might think of as a floating ending point. And so uh, we have s of x, right? So the arc length ending at x would be the integral from a to x of the square root of 1 plus f prime of t squared dt. Now one slight change you'll re remember from just your plain Jane arc length formula was it usually goes from a to b and you add the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. But when you make this uh, upper limit of integration a variable, uh, you'll recall that you can't have the same variable uh, in your integral or let it be the uh, variable of integration that you have in your limit of integration. So, um, so we'll remember those details as we you know, work this problem out. But um, basically it's just plug and chug pretty much. Um, so our starting point is at zero and our function is not written with the notation f of x, it's y, but you know, that, that's okay. Uh, we can make a, a slight modification here. Uh, if this is f prime of t, if this is written in terms of y and x, we can say dy dt, right, after we write this as a function of t instead. So we'll make that small change, but other than that, it should be uh, pretty straightforward. So let's Let's give it a shot. Okay, here's our curve, and let's um, let's get right to it. Okay, so we'll have s of x will be the integral starting at zero and ending at x, and then we'll have the square root of one plus something squared dt. Okay, now we have to figure out what this something is. So y equals 2x to the 3 halves. So wh why don't we find dy dx first? Since y is written as a function of x, let's just go ahead and find dy dx. As a simple power rule, the 3 halves comes down. We get 3x to the 1 half. 3x to the 1 half. And so if we want to write this derivative simply as a function of t, we just change the letter is all. Um, this uh, integrand here, it, you know, it doesn't uh, care what letter we use, but um, we're going to need to use t since we're integrating with respect to t. So I have 3t to the 1 half quantity squared dt. All right, let's work through some of this algebra. Integral 0 to x. We'll have the square root of, let's see, 1 plus. Uh, 3 squared is 9, and the square root of t squared, or t to the 1 half squared, would just be t dt. So that'll be our arc length. And so whenever an x is chosen, um, that x would be plugged in here, and this indefinite integral would be evaluated, and we would have our answer. But to keep the, the you know person asking for this um, from having to compute integrals every time an x is chosen, let's just go ahead and compute this integral with the x in there, with the x in there, and then that way we won't have an integral to do, we'll literally just have a, a function of x. So we have to compute this integral here. Um, looks like this is gonna require u substitution. And so let's um, choose our u wisely. Uh, as we know, normally when you have an integral that has composition, we'll let the u be the inside of the, the two composed functions. So I have a, a one plus nine t written inside of a radical. So that's probably gonna be my u. And I'll also need a du of um, nine, so because that's the derivative of one plus nine t. And then we'll put a dt as well. Okay, so um, when we rewrite everything, uh, some stuff stays and some stuff goes. Um, we have a square root of u. That's that's really nice, so that's, that's gonna go away. But unfortunately, to get a du, I need a 9 dt, but I only have a, D, uh, a dt only. So how am I going to get a 9? Well, uh, one way we can do this is uh, we can insert a 9 in the integrand, and we'll balance it with a 1 ninth on the outside of the integral. It's a very common thing to do. We do this with a lot of integrals here. So, so now we can rewrite it. Um, 
you got to be a little careful with this being a definite integral and there's more than one way to do this so um, I'll just have to choose one way to, to discuss so I, I'm uh, I might write down both ways in fact but um, these limits of integration we have to, you just have to be careful how to handle these because um, 0 to x is the limit for t not for u so if we go changing this integral to be a function of u as opposed to t we're gonna to have to modify what these limits of integration are so I think I might just actually write it down uh, two separate ways so let, let me do that real quickly here okay uh, but I'll probably only work it out uh, one one way okay so what, what we have currently is um, we have s of x s of x equals we have the one ninth that was on the outside uh, we have an integral I'll, I'll deal with these limits of integration in, in just a second and um, and then we have uh, what used to be the square root of 1 plus 9t will now be the square root of u and the 9 dt will turn out to be du so you can refer back to your notes because I know you're not looking at it right here but what we have is the square root of u du right now I I'm a little concerned about what these new limits of integration are going to be they're they're unfortunately not 0 to x um, because 0 to x was the range for for the t values but here's what we're going to do we recall that u was chosen to be 1 plus 9t, right? That was what we um, defined u as. And so if uh, t equals 0, t equals 0, the lower limit, what would that be equivalent to in terms of u? Well, if t is 0, 0 times 9 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So that would be the same as u being 1. So I'll put 1 as my lower limit for u or we would put zero as the lower limit for for dt okay and if um, t was x right the upper limit that it you know what it used to be then u would be one plus nine x and so that's your new upper limit uh, of integration and now some some students tr struggle with this uh, when you do u substitution and you convert your limits like i said there is another way to do this where you don't have to worry about converting the limits and let me finish this example out and then I'll, I'll briefly make that comment. Okay, so um, this lets us do the integration because we only have u to the one half. That's quite easy to integrate. We have the, the one ninth is still there. The integral of u to the uh, one half, u raised to the one half power, would be u to the three halves power with a two thirds out front. That's the power rule, of course. We'll put a bracket. We'll put a 1 and then a 1 plus 9x like this. Okay, and then uh, we plug in the top and we plug in the bottom and subtract. And then that, that'll be pretty much it. So s of x, this will be our final answer here. Uh, we'll have you know 2 over 27 if we want to just combine this into one fraction. 2 over 27. And uh, I'll just do the subtraction and I'll leave the 2 over 27 factored out out front here. Okay, so we'll plug in 1 plus 9x, get 1 plus 9x raised to the 3 halves power, and then minus, and then we'll plug in a 1 and get 1. So like I said, it doesn't really matter, you know, if you want to distribute the 2 over 27 to each term, you can do that. Uh, I think I'll choose just to, to leave it factored here. So what what is this guy's job? What does he do? Well, he's the arc length function for our original function y equals 2x to the 3 halves meaning uh, starting at the origin when an x is chosen then this will reveal the length from the origin along that curve up until wh wherever we stop uh, and you can kind of see the math playing out correctly if we took s of 0 just as a, a simple example that would be the arc length function from 0 up to 0. We haven't gone anywhere. We would expect the answer to be 0. Uh, and check it out. Um, 9 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 to the 3 halves is 1. 1 minus 1 makes 0. And so once x starts increasing, then s of x starts to get larger and, and larger as well. Okay, so this is our, our arc length function for y equals 2x to the 3 halves. 
Uh, now, I had mentioned another way to do this integral. If you struggle a little bit with u substitution, uh, here's an, another option uh, once you're at this stage, 1 9th integral of square root of u du. All right, once you get to this stage right here, this 1 9th times 2 thirds, uh, let me jot this down on a fresh page. All right, once you get to the stage where you get uh, 1 9th times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, bracket from, you know, if you don't want to convert these limits of integration, here's an alternate idea. Um, you can write 1 9th times 2 thirds, and rather just finishing the definite integral with u, you can convert it back to what it was back in terms of, of t, which was 1 plus 9t, as you recall. And then we'll use a bracket from 0 to x, uh, which was our old limits. And so this will keep you from having to convert your limits over into limits for u. You can just keep them your old limits uh, for the range of t, but we'll just have to remember to switch this um, function back to a function of t before we plug in these values. Okay, but really that's that's the biggest place where you could you know potentially make a mistake. Uh, so anyway, there, there's your example of a, a good arc length uh, function.